We are back tonight with a News 4 exclusive. The parents of a man dragged to his death by a subway train are speaking for the first time only to the I-team. They're convinced that safety gaps at the MTA played a role in the loss of their son. And as Chris Glorioso reports tonight, they now intend to sue the MTA, a transit agency already struggling with soaring legal bills. It is something New Yorkers do millions of times each day. Step through the subway doors. And I wish we could have my son back. But Jack and Kona and his wife Diane say doors like these became a death trap for their son. How does a train leave with somebody being dragged? It was an evening rush on a Monday last October that Jack and Diane's son, 20-year-old Joseph Ancona, was boarding a downtown one train at Columbus Circle. According to the parents, their son somehow got caught in the closing subway doors. They say when the train started moving, Ancona was pulled onto the tracks and hit by another oncoming subway which killed him. How is it possible in 2023 that a conductor started a train with a man trapped in between the doors? It's unheard of. The Anconas have now hired attorneys Rosemary Arnold and Paige Butler to help them sue the MTA. They want to know why a conductor with cameras covering the whole platform didn't see a commuter in distress. The fact that someone can get caught in a train door, that shouldn't happen. Every loss of life in the mass transit system breaks my heart. This one, you know, is a little extra. After Joseph Ancona died, MTA chair and CEO Jano Lieber stressed the randomness of the accident, saying subway fatalities are exceedingly rare. But Ancona's parents say simple preventative safety measures could have or should have saved their son's life. Things like sensors that prevent the trains from moving when someone's caught in a door, or an additional pair of eyes on the platform to help conductors. What you're dealing with here is one of the top 10 busiest subway stations in Manhattan during rush hour. An MTA spokesperson told the I-team this was a tragic situation with a terrible result that led to thorough internal and outside independent reviews. But the MTA declined to talk about the outcome of those reviews or answer questions about the accident citing the pending litigation. The Ancona family is seeking $50 million in damages. If their claim is successful, it would add to the transit agency's mounting legal bills. The I-team analyzed 20 years of financial statements and found payouts for claims spiked in 2011, then dropped, and now they're rising again, from $155 million in 2012 to $426 million in 2021. That's a 175 percent increase in the last decade. Another way of looking at it, the MTA's legal bill is now almost as expensive as its entire electricity bill, and the trains run on electricity. And we miss them. We miss them a lot. Joseph and Kona's parents say spending a fraction of the MTA's legal bill on safety might have resulted in their son surviving his commute home. They want their lawsuit to be a wake-up call. He had nothing but, but a bright future ahead of him that got taken away, unfortunately, through things that could have been prevented. The MTA blames higher legal bills on an increasingly litigious environment affecting lots of government agencies. The Transit Authority says all subway cars have safety features and protocols intended to stop a train from moving if the doors aren't fully closed. Chris Glorioso, News 4, New York.